Abe is. Um, and so I want to start off with a story. And if you've heard this story, um, I'm not going to do like Steve Miller who says, stop me if you heard it, because I don't want you to stop me. Just let me, just be polite and let me say it. Okay? <laughs> so, so there's a group of pastors who are getting together and talking about prayer. What is the best, most effective position to pray in? You know, is there one way to pray, a method to pray that's better than another? And, and while they were in this room talking, the telephone repairman was in there. This is back before they had just cell phones. They had actually phone lines. And um, so he was, he was working on his stuff, and these guys were talking. And the one says, well, you know, the best, I found the most effective position to pray was with hands up in a worship position, you know, a position of worship and he went on to expound about this, why, and all this. And another guy, another one of the pastors says, well, you know, I really found that um, the best position to pray was on my knees. You know, get before the Lord, get on a chair in front of my knee, on my knees. And, you know, wearing, wearing the pants out at the knees is a good thing. And, and, and he expounded on that. And the third one said, no, 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 the best, by far, the best position to pray where God hears you and answers prayers is when you lay flat out, prostrate before the Lord, prostrate before the Lord. Got to get those words right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> so get before the Lord. And God hears those prayers best. Well, the telephone repairman was listening to all this. He couldn't help but interject. He said, you know, guys, the, what I found to be the most effective prayer for me was when I was up on a phone, up on a phone telephone pole dangling 40 feet in the air from my heels. <laughs> he said, that works. <laughs> That's the most effective. I thought that was cute, but okay, well, I'll work on that. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, you know what? Can I borrow that sign you guys had for the radio, the radio thing? And <laughs> the applause. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I, I, was, I was sitting with Al Garvalli at the, at the movie, at the movie, the, the play last night, the musical last night, you know, and the, every time they held the applause sign up, he got the biggest charge out of that. He just, it must have taken him back sometime. <laughs> anyway, so, anyway, so we are on the topic of prayer, as Daryl said, and um, if we want to be, a f be more like, our series this year is about being, being more like Jesus, being a follower of Jesus. What does that look like? What does it take from you, from me, to be more like Jesus? And as you can see on our banner, one of the things is we need to be prayerful. Being a praying people, being a people who go to the Lord, who hone the relationship, uh, people who, who grow in our relationship with Jesus. Jesus said he does nothing when he was alive and, and lived on earth. He does nothing outside of the will of the Father, right? And so you and I should be of the same mindset. What's God want me to do? How did Jesus know what the will of the Father was? Oftentimes you read that he had ministry, this and that. He would get away and go and spend time in prayer. Get away and spend time with the Father. And, and it's so easy to allow life to, to run us, life to take over and not do that. If you really want to know what God wants for your life, spending time with Father God is a great way to do it. And that's one of the ways is in prayer. And prayer is not just spewing up prayers. It's, it's also listening, being still before the Lord uh, and what he has. And so we've been looking specifically at First Chronicles um, 9, 10, um, about Jabez, really uh, verse 10 about Jabez. Um, but as, as Daryl said, we, in James, in James 4, if you didn't look at it, you do not have because you do not ask. And, and um, many of us really don't know. I talk to people all the time who really aren't sure about prayer. In fact, I had somebody come up to me at Nabawe. I have a friend who asked me to teach them how to pray. What should I tell them? I said, be the example. How do you pray? What do you do? Be the example. You know, I, and I could espouse all this other stuff. Well, you do this and do this and do this. But, you know, really, it's about that relationship. When I talk to you guys or if with any of you, do I, is there a formula that I use to talk with you? No. We just talk, don't we? And that's one of the things that I, I encourage this person to do. Um, and so some, because we don't all know how to pray effectively, um, how to ask, we, we wind up asking in ways that are just not right. I, this is my opinion, that are just not the best way. In fact, we we'll might find out that they're wrong. So we're going to look at Jabez's prayer and see if we can figure out 
what made him and his prayer so special and special to God. Um, we see in Jabez, in Jabez, in 1 Chronicles 4, 9, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother named him Jabez, saying, because I bore him with pain. Understand, remember we said that is not just child pain of childbirth. That is, there must have been something else happening in life. Another pain, a struggle that, that her and the family might have been going into. Maybe her husband left her with the kids, and, and then during that time she was pregnant with him. And I don't, We don't know. But we just know that there was pain enough to mention it. Uh, Ezra, as he's writing this book, it says, As his mother named him Jabez, saying, Because I bore him with pain. Now, Ezra goes on to say, Now Jabez called on who? The God of Israel. He didn't call on a, on a false god. He didn't call on a, anything else. He calls on the God of Israel, saying, let's read this together, please. Let's read. Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my border and that your hand might be with me and that you would keep me from harm that it may not pain me. And God granted him what he requested. Jabez, a man who had favor, found favor with God, was blessed by God. We know Jabez was a cut above everybody else. His brothers probably were men of honor because it said he was more honorable than his brothers. And really, that's kind of where we're starting at. Um, He was an honorable man. He walked as a man of integrity. He walked uprightly. He walked in honor. Uh, Psalms 84 tells us, For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord gives grace and glory. Now listen to this. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Jabez walked uprightly. He was honorable, man of integrity. You and I, if you're a follower of Jesus, if you have said yes to Jesus as Savior of your life and Lord of your life, those two are not exclusive of each other. We take Jesus to be Savior, we also take him to be Lord. And taking him to be Lord means he runs life. He's in charge of my life. So often it's like, I want fire insurance. I want him as my savior so I know I'm not going to hell, right? But I want to run the life and do what I want. That's what happens a lot of times. But he was walking uprightly. And and here it says, and no good thing does God withhold from you and me people who walk uprightly. So if we're going to be a follower of Jesus, we need to walk uprightly. We need to be walk integrity. If you say, I'll be here then, I'll be here that, I'll do this, I'll do that, you be a person of your word. If you, you're not a person who, sp- who spews awful, terrible things about somebody, you're a person who the truth is the truth, and you stay with that. Um, so my question is, how's your prayer life? You know, how, are your prayers being answered? And if yes, that's great, that's awesome. But if no, then let's start with the honorable thing. Are you a person who walks in integrity? Are you a person who's walking uprightly? You know, um, it's just so important for us to do that. And that's where we start with Jabez's prayer, walking uprightly. He was more honorable. He, God knew that it was important that you and I understand our need to be a people of integrity. The world is watching us. They're watching you and me. And if we're not of integrity, if we're not full of grace, and we're not full of truth, if we're not honorable, what do they see? Nothing different from anyone else. And we're supposed to be different. We're supposed to be, in fact, in Peter it says we're supposed to be peculiar. Some of you, well, I'm going to leave it there. (laughs) But we are supposed to be different. So you know what? The way I look at this, I'm thinking, okay, so if if you're gossiping at work, if you're lying, if you're talking about people behind their back and all this stuff, and you think you should be getting a promotion at work or you should be getting a raise for, for your job you do and you don't, can God bless that? Does God bless this backbiting? Does God bless that type of person? If you think that, that you should be getting a, an advancement in, a, in a, an organization of some sort, you know, a position, but you're not doing it, and here you are stabbing people in the back, and here you are doing all sorts of undermined things, God doesn't bless that. God can't bless that. God might use that. Don't confuse used with blessing. God can. How many know that God can use us in our worst day for his glory if he chooses and God can also cause us to suffer the consequences on our worst day 
for what we need to. Understand that. But, um, you know, if we allow, you and I, if we allow unconfessed sin to run in our life, God can't and he doesn't bless it. If we allow the tongue to get away from us all the time and don't really care, if we allow, if we're living in, Living a lifestyle that is, that is unbecoming to God, if it's pornography, if it's, if it's drugs, if it's whatever, whatever it is, I don't care. If we're allowing that to run in our life, God can't bless that life. I mean, he could, but he doesn't bless that life. James again, let's go read the whole thing that Daryl said. You do not, you desire and do not have. And because you desire and don't have, you murder. You covet. And you cannot obtain. And because you covet and can't ob- obtain, you fight and quarrel. Sounds like a bunch of kids on the playground. You do not have. Why? Because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly. There it is. You can pray and you can ask, but you can ask wrongly. Or as the NIV says, you can ask with wrong motives. You know, and as Daryl said, we can deceive ourselves thinking we're doing the right thing, but we're asking in the wrong way with the wrong motives. You and I, you know, it's about our motives. Where do motives stem from? The heart. They stem from the heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, right? From the heart. That's where it comes from. What is in your heart? If it's garbage and trash, that's what's going to come out. You know, it's going to be self-centered stuff that comes out. Your call and my call as a follower of Jesus is to live upright in a downright world. That's what we're supposed to do. So, Jabez says, oh, that you would bless me indeed, right? That was the beginning of his prayer. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. And as I was pondering this, this whole, this part of the prayer, I was wondering about bless. The word bless. Um, You know, isn't it nice? I don't know if you've ever experienced this. I hope you have that. You're, you come up, meet somebody, and, and they say, how you doing? And they have a smile on their face, and they say, I'm blessed. It's even nicer when we can say, I'm blessed. It's because the truth is, every one of us in this room right here is blessed. We are blessed. You know, you can, you can make the argument, well, I don't have, I got this, or this problem, or that problem, this problem. You know what? You live in America. If you have change in your pocket, you have more than people in other countries do at all. I mean, it is just amazing. The poorest people of America have more than, the, than people in many other parts of the world, most of the world, actually. We are blessed. And we're in the UP. How much better can it get? <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah, you know what life's like below the bridge? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm going below the bridge today, and I can't wait to get back Monday night. Anyway, but we, we are a blessed people. The word blessed or blessing, according to Nelson's Bible Dictionary, is the act of declaring or wishing favor or goodness upon others. So, you know, I'm going to wish goodness, I'm going to wish favor. So blessing is not only wishing somebody well or, or goodness to them, but also has the power to bring about the blessing. Understand. True blessing has a power. It's a powerful thing. In the Bible, important persons bless those people who are le- with less power or less influence. The patriarchs in the Bible, in the Old Testament, you know, they pronounce blessings upon the children, especially when it's getting close to the end of their life. And understand this about a blessing. In, in the Bible, we see a blessing. If a blessing was spoken by mistake, it cannot be taken back. Once a blessing was given out, it was there, and it was a powerful tool. I think of... Um, uh, Jacob, or Esau and Jacob, right? Um, Isaac was coming to the end of his years, and he asked Esau to go out, and his oldest, to go out and hunt and bring, bring some food back, cook it, and, f- and he would pronounce the blessing on him. Previously, before this, Jacob had done what? Stolen his birthright. He'd taken the birthright from him. So, so Esau goes out to hunt. Meanwhile, some other underlying stuff happens, you know, and and. Jacob comes, and, and he does, does this, acts like he's Isaac or Esau, and, and uh, he gets a blessing. And after that, when Esau comes back, it says, then Isaac trembled violently. What's that? <laughs> I don't know, trembled violently. It's, trembled violently and said, 
Who was he then that hunted game and brought it to me so that I ate of all of it before you came and blessed him? Yes, and he shall be blessed. And after this, Esau says, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't you have any blessing left for me? And he goes, ah, you know, just fresh out. I don't have anything. I, I gave it all. I gave it all him. Can't you do something? And he said, no, I'm going to make him the head over you. You're going to serve him. And so he said, give me a blessing. So he blessed him with, you're going to serve your brother. <laughs> That's as good as it gets. And, and so the blessing, once it was given out, could not be retracted even if it went to the wrong person. How many know it went to the right person? That's how God works, right? I mean, we look at this underhanded and stuff, but God is still working in that, in, in those times. Leaders, in, when it comes to blessing, often bless people, especially when they're getting ready to leave them. Like I showed you, Deuteronomy 33, um, Moses blesses the sons of Israel before his death, and then Joshua picks it up in Joshua 22, blessing especially, I was noting the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. When he blessed them, it says, so Joshua blessed them and sent them away, and they went to their tents. Basically, they went to where they're living. They're coming into the promised land, and then he goes on to say, all the land that they took, and at the end of this, it says, so when Joshua sent them away to their tents, kind of reverses it, he blessed them, gives them a blessing for that. And then Jesus, before he left, when he went to the cross, when he um, went to the grave, when he died, when he rose again, he came and before he left his disciples, it tells us that it says that, and he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands, and he blessed them. He gave a blessing before he leaves the disciples, and that was such an important thing to do. In the Bible, we see that equals could bless each other. In Genesis 12, God's blessing of Abram, it says, and I will bless those who bless you. So if we bless each other, the blessing comes down upon us as well. Here it was coming down saying that, that people who would bless Abram and be good to Abram, he would bless those people. I think that thing still goes to you and me today as we bless and encourage each other, we get the same thing back. A person can also bless God, showing gratitude to, her, to him. Moses, in Deuteronomy 8, he says, When you have eaten and are satisfied, you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. I understand that's before the promised land, but just ahead of time, bless God. We bless God today. Also, the psalmist said we bless God with how? Bless the Lord. How's the song go? Oh, my soul and all. All that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Soul goes down deeper than just this verbiage that we spew out. God bless you. You know, it's not like you sneezed and, and you, we say, oh, bless you, right? It's, 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 and then it goes on to say, forget none of his benefits. Remember all that he has said. And I, I believe that the greatest blessings that you and I have today it comes out of generation, uh, Genesis 22, but it's, it, we see it in Acts 3. And it says, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, or excuse me, I went backward. It, this is God's blessing us, giving us, giving man things, giving people things. He creates us in our image. He creates man, man and woman. It says, verse 28, God blessed them. God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it, rule over everything. With the blessing of God, he started off saying, it's yours. I'm going to bless you with everything here. I'm going to bless you, and you can do with it what you want. You rule over it. You take care of it. God does that even today. And his greatest blessing was for you and me, returning from evil. It is you who are the sons of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with your fathers, saying to Abram, this is Genesis twenty-two eighteen, 18, and, you, and in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Going on, they said, for you first... God raised up his servant, sent him to bless you. How? By turning every one of you from your wicked ways. When you, a person says yes to Jesus to be Savior of the life, and they turn from their wicked ways, they repent, they say, yeah, I'm not living right, I'm going to follow you. You are blessed. The blessing comes down. One of the greatest blessings we have. I think another one was the forgiveness of sins. And this is, Romans 4, Paul is echoing Psalms 22. Blessed are those who, whose lawless deeds, whose sins, or wickedness have been forgiven 
and whose sins have been covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord will not take into account. Isn't that a blessing to know that, you know, if you sin, if you walk in ways that are not right, but you recognize those, you confess it. Confess it means agreeing with God that, yes, what I'm doing is wrong. And you turn from that. Repenting is turning this way. Instead of going this way, we're going this way. Turn from that. You're blessed. God won't remember that. I'm telling you, when it comes to the day of judgment, I am going to be so thankful that God doesn't remember what I did, that he remembers your sins. He takes them as far as the east as the west. He remembers your sin no more. Isn't that good? I mean, I don't know about you, but, man, that's a blessing. And that should encourage us to always be in tune with God, to be stayed up with God, to be in a right relationship with God all the time. Yes, and there are times when the opposite of blessing happens in the Bible. Even today, cursing. We see it in the Bible. Deuteronomy 27, Moses lists all the curses that fall on the people. But for you and me today, somebody, somebody pulls it in front of you in a car or somebody just gets in your face on something and just swears at you or does something else. What's your natural reaction? Isn't it that you keep moving on this way, buddy? <laughs> you know, we're, we're going to have words. I mean, I don't know about you, but honestly, the, the flesh starts to rise up a little bit there, doesn't it? The flesh starts to get, you know, I mean, you know, the flesh is right there, and it really wants to do, and it, it really wants to curse back at him. It really wants to do whatever back at him. But, you know, you and I are called to bless. In fact, we're called to not just bless for that person. We're called to ask for the benefits for that person. When you've been done wrong, you've, we've been told to do good to them. Jesus said, but I say to you who hear, love your enemies. Usually we stop right there with that one because that's tough. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. What happens? Somebody comes and gets in your face or anything, something, and you say, you know what? God bless you. I, I hope, I'm going to be praying that God would give you a great day. I mean, you know, if somebody is really getting in your face and you start saying, I'm going to ask God to give you a great day. And that'd shut them up pretty quick, wouldn't it? <laughs> You're going to do what? <laughs> I, I forgot what I was going to say now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, wouldn't it do that? And if you start praying, you know, the reason you pray for people who, who do bad to you, it's not for them as much as it is for your heart. It does good for them. And wouldn't it be a great blessing to them if they realize the error of their ways and turn to God? Can you imagine a, a greater blessing than that? I can't. You know, so in the midst of the junk in life, we're called to bless. We're called to encourage. We're called to pray for our enemies and those people. You know, we need to be quicker in blessing than quicker in giving a nasty word. Um, you know, we've got to be upright people in the downright world. So in our day and age, we've taken the word blessing and we've, we've taken words and we take them and give them different meetings. We water them down. We do sorts of things. Um, like, for example, if I say writing this sermon was hard, you would all know what I'm talking about. But if somebody's coming from another country and I said writing this sermon is hard, they would look at it and they're trying to find, figure out English to begin with. And, they're not. and understand that um, writing the sermon, the correct way to say it would be writing the sermon is difficult, right? Because... That's hard, right? So we, we kind of do that for the English language. And we've done that. We've done somebody sneezes, you bless them. God bless you. You know, or somebody, well, you bless you, you know. And I just, I typed an email the other day, and I said, blessings, Tim, Pastor Tim Miller. And, um, and I thought later, I thought, did I mean it? You know, it just, instead of saying sincerely, <laughs> you know, I, I thought, you know, I just get a habit of doing it. And it's, some of it is because we don't think. We just, we're just in habits of, of doing these things. And, and we, it's not the same. You know, when we're really true about blessing people, um, we need to be careful how we do it. We don't make it an everyday occurrence because it's not. Blessings are made for special things. 
When we ask for God's blessing, people, we're not asking for more of what we could get for ourselves. I'm not talking about prayer life. You know, if we say, oh, that you would bless me indeed, it's not more of what I can do for myself. We're crying out for the wonderful, unlimited goodness that only God has the power to know or give us. That's what we're doing. When we ask for God's blessing, it's easy to, to start asking for a specific blessing. And there are times when God does bless that. But let me just say this. Jabez, what did he pray for? He said, oh, that you bless me indeed. And stop there. Then he, he said that you expand my territory. He didn't say what the territory was. He didn't say how much to expand it. He didn't say anything like that. But we have a tendency to say, oh, God, that you would bless me. And I love a new, a new Chevy Cruze and blue if possible. If we could get a manual transmission, that'd be nice too, God. You know, you know, I mean, sometimes, don't you see what we do sometimes in our prayer life? We put these parameters on God. We say this, and we're, we're saying that, we, I want this and I want that. But we want to do, we want, I want all that God's heart has for me. And if I, and if I put conditions on it, if I put parameters on it, I'm not going to get that. Am I, are we tracking on that? Does that make any sense? You know, God knows more and has more than what my human mind, your human mind can, can possibly conceive. You know, I'm just saying, if, I, if we just say, God bless me, God, I want favor, and I'm one to pray for favor. I believe in that. I'm one to pray for blessing. I believe in that. But I'm just saying, God, I want all you have for me, nothing more and nothing less. You decide what that is, God, because I trust you. You decide if I'm going to have this. You decide I'm, what I'm going to be. All too often we're praying and we're praying and we're thinking we're praying rightly and unwittingly we place these parameters on God's blessing. And God says, well, that's not what you want. I had this in mind. I had that in mind. You know, if we understand that God wants the best for us and that he's sovereign, that he knows tomorrow, that we don't know and allow him to decide what that favor or that blessing looks like, we'd be a whole lot better off in our prayer life. Psalm 90, in the prayer of Moses, Moses writes, let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and confirm for us the work of our hands. Yes, confirm the work of our hands. So I think it's okay. Go ahead, pray for favor. I've told you that before. I pray that over my children, over my family, over our lives, over blessing. Ask for the blessing. Just let God decide what it looks like. What would happen to you in your life if you started saying, God, I want your favor. I, I want your favor on my chi children. I want your favor on these. I want this, that one that they put their hands to, where they put their feet, that your favor would be there and your blessing would be there. Let God take care of it. What would happen in your life if you started doing that? Instead of saying, um, God, um, I got this meeting today, and I really don't want a lot of trouble in that meeting, God. I really want things to go my way. And, and God's going, well, I had a different plan, but all right, all right I'll give you give that. And it's just average. Now, I, I, honestly, I, I think better off. I've been praying, um, we've been praying for Sigurd, especially this week. And it's really easy for me to want to pray for Sigurd that God, and I do this, God, my heart says, I want him out. I want this. But I found myself more and more praying for favor for him. Because I don't know tomorrow. If you could have anything and favor of God is one of those things. You're further, much further ahead with the favor of God in your life. I don't know what God has planned for Sig. But I'm praying that it would be good. It'd be favor. It'd be a blessing. I'm praying for the favor of Joseph on Sigurd. Joseph was favored by God, right? And he spent a little time, in fact... What's really cool is they liked him so much. He had so much favor, it just dripped off him. He just dripped, he just oozed off him. He had so much favor that he got to run the jail. The jailer said, here, hey, Joey, Joey, here are the keys. Hey, watch these guys, will you? 
And Joseph ran it better than the jailer, and the jailer's looking good. I mean, that's how, that's how good he was. God knows way more. Paul said that, that he can do exceedingly abundantly more than you can ask or imagine. So why pray so specific that it hampers and hamstrings God? Are we, we tracking on this? Um, so do we dare pray as Jabez and ask for God's blessing? You do not have because you do not ask, right? Today I'm trying to give you a handle on how to reach and understand your destiny by the way you pray and allow God to develop your destiny by the way you pray and what you ask for. I also want you to, us all to understand that we're called to be obedient people, upright people. In order to be obedient, we must be in God's will. Jesus prayed it, thy will be done, not my will be done. If you've got bookmarks in your um, things, just a, another way to bring a reminder to you for you to have. Um, I, 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 my prayer is that we all would be a people that are blessed and seen by all. You know what? If you're walking around with God's blessing and God's favor in your life, people are going to notice that. People are going to go, what's with you? And you get to tell them. So let us be a people that, that are blessed and that bless. Let us be prepared for and ask and receive that blessing. Let's pray. Father God.